Hello, I'm Neve McInhill. I'm an actor, a writer, and um, I teach and tutor English and drama. And I'm here today with Satchel to discuss with you how to create a resource um, or a piece of research, so a research resource for live production. So I will do this um, via a presentation for you. And just to confirm that you won't need any equipment for this um, presentation. You might want to take some notes or a notebook, but you can replay the session. So please don't worry if you think you've missed something. So let me just get my presentation for you. There you go. Okay, so creating a resource for a production. Ooh, that's the wrong option. Let's go for this one. Okay, so here we go. I'm creating a re research resource for a live production. Um, why do we do this? How do we do this? These are all questions that I will help you um, figure out. So, the three takeaways from today's lesson will hopefully be that you know how to research and gather inspiration, that you are provided with some key questions to include in your research, and the opportunity to broaden your ideas and capabilities to produce a really exciting, thoroughly researched and exciting piece of drama. Okay. Uh, key questions. So the first takeaway that I'd like to offer you is the, the key options of key questions to include in your research. So these might be um, questions that you write in your notebook when you first start to think about your production. They might be um, questions that you write on a post-it on the wall. Um, they can be very visual um, and a constant source of inspiration. And um, I recommend that you use the, these three. So number one, what do I need to know? And that question will always stick with you right up until the minute you stage the production. So what do I need to know about um, how people behaved in the 1800s? Or what do I need to know about creating a naturalistic style of production? Or what do I need to know about um, immersive theatre and how the audience responds to that? Or what do I need to know about fashion in the 1970s? The things that you need to know are probably an endless list and that's really exciting. So. Um, it's a big question, but when you break it down, you're always asking yourself, what do I need to know? Question number two is, what story am I trying to tell? So with your production, um, whatever it might be, it could be a play or a film or a piece of drama, what story am I trying to tell? So if you really break the question down, that will always help you find direction in your research. So if you want to tell the story of Romeo and Juliet and you want to tell the audience really about um, how society behaved towards women at the time, your research is going to focus on that. However, if you were creating that piece of text as in Romeo and Juliet in a contemporary way, maybe through dance, your story that you're telling might be slightly different. So your research is dictated by the story that you're telling, not necessarily I must find out everything about Romeo and Juliet. Hope that makes sense. And then the third question is what information do I want the audience to know? And I being either yourself, you might be directing the piece or you could be the production designer or um, you could be um, producing it. Um, but it also, the I can also refer to the group. So what, from, what information do I, do I or we want the audience to know? So that last question is the key question where you understand that a production or a play is a two-way exchange and this question will always keep you right. So it will always help you think, is the message that I'm trying to convey getting across to the audience or is there a barrier there um, and is that barrier because I haven't communicated it effectively and have I not communicated it effectively because I don't know the answer to the first question which is what do I need to know and then the second question, what story am I trying to tell? So these three key questions kind of tie in with each other a lot. Um, one feeds into the next one. If you're feeling a bit lost on one question, uh, you might go to the first or the third. Um, they all kind of relate to each other and they will help you stay on track with your research. So that's your key questions covered. Why? Why do we research anything? Well, there's lots of reasons, but why do we research um, 
and put together a kind of an informative resource for um, a production. Well, first of all, where would you start? You have to start somewhere. So you must inform yourself about the story that you're trying to tell. Research helps to expand your ideas. It helps you open up your mind for inspiration and it may help to shape your production in a way that you didn't realise. Um, for example, if you really are stuck about the staging, researching um, the houses of where people lived, for example, if you're setting your play in the 1920s, might then inform your staging choices and that might inform your costume choices or it might inform how you direct the actors in the play or the production. Um, so research only helps expand your ideas. So if you're sitting down some day brainstorming or you're just feeling very, very stuck, um, sit down and do a little bit of research and I promise it will, it will give something back to you. Um, Creating a research resource means that no idea goes amiss. So one day you might look back on a, a piece of research that you've done or a resource and you realise, ah, I started off with that idea, but I ended up taking that out of the production and using a completely different lighting style, for example. So it means that all your ideas are always recorded and that's really important because it's very frustrating when you think, oh, I had this very, very good idea about how to stage this play and I completely forgot. So if you have your research resource, that means no idea goes amiss, everything's accounted for, and you have a wealth of ideas there to explore and expand on. You will get more ideas by creating material, I promise you. If you sit down tonight and research maybe productions of a play that you really enjoy or a film um, that you really enjoy, um, you will find out more information about that production but once you start especially on the internet you'll find yourself going down a bit of a, a rabbit hole with um, information and ideas and you might end up looking at the shoes people wore for the film to be produced you might be researching a play that you really like and end up then looking at how the sound design was put together and then looking at how sound was designed at the time of the play. So you will definitely get more ideas by collating material and if you keep all your material in one resource or maybe two or three, um, you will always find new little nuggets of inspiration. Why create a research resource if you're working as a group? If you're working as a group um, and you're researching things together, and you're accessing this research regularly together. Shared language, excuse me, <laughs> shared language develops and ideas flow. So if I was working with you on a piece of research about um, cars in the 1970s because we were putting on a production that involved cars, I might mention something to you, um, like a tactical term about the lighting of a car. Um, or equally, if you're researching fashion in the 90s and you refer to a style of a trouser that was popular um, and the other person wasn't um, aware of this research, then the language doesn't develop. Everyone's on a different page, um, you're in a different place, and it means then that things aren't working together cohesively. So if you're working as a group, researching things together, the shared language comes out of um, some are very, very um, organic and natural and your ideas bounce off each other, it becomes a very collaborative effort and a much more beneficial um, way to spend your time. Working, uh, researching and working as a group um, can definitely have a lot more benefits than researching independently. You can bring it together and then expand on the research together. Um, so, hi. Well, I think um, the majority of us use the internet um, to research anything that we need to know. You can type in um, anything at all on the internet, an abundance of information will come back to you and all that information is there for free. Um, what I will say about the internet is you just always want to make sure that if it's um, factual information that you're making records of where you get your information from. Obviously use the internet in a clever and safe way and make sure that all the, the sites you're visiting are um, all legit and um, the majority of the internet information is free. You shouldn't need to pay for any information really on the internet. Um, you might be able to access certain articles um, if you want to pay, um, which would be articles that people have written and they want you to pay 
them for their use but then that can lead you down the quotation sort of side of things but the internet is probably the biggest and most amazing resource that you will ever have and it is endless one last tip when using the internet if you are spending time if you're sitting down um, today and researching a part of your production um, allocate yourself some time so there's lots of, of ways to do that as well so one technique is the Pomodoro technique where you work for 20 minutes at a time so you work for 20 minutes and then you have your 10 minute break and you do that four times in a row because the internet can really gobble up your whole time and um, you end up being very tired a lot of eye strain you're a bit lost you've got 22 tabs open on Google and you haven't really got to where you wanted to get to so limit your time on the internet and um, you will find that it's it's much more productive for you the library obviously um, the library is a resource that we can make great use of and um, Sadly, it's not as accessible as the internet for us all, but um, it's a great space to go and really get lost in your thoughts because it'll always be a nice, quiet um, space suitable for studying. Um, so if you can pop to your local library um, or you've got access to that, um, please do use that as a research, research resource. Galleries. I'm putting this button in here because um, one of my drama teachers when we were studying production always brought us to a gallery at the start of a production and asked us to pick a painting that we found um, related to our role in the production and our part in the production. So you can go to a gallery that it might be a modern art gallery and you might be staging a production of um, a play set in 1910 but you might go and you might find inspiration from the shapes that you see in the modern art gallery that can then translate into your production even though they're not from the same the, the same era or time um, but don't limit yourself um, galleries are, are incredibly visual again they're a space that is set up for people to go and seek inspiration and um, ideas so they're always a great one if you have a chance galleries are normally free as well um, so you can use internet to do your resource uh, research and find out which ones are near you um, watch films or plays which might explore the same subject matter so if you were um, uh, staging, staging a production in 1959 um, or specifically um, a, a specific year, you might then find yourself researching all the films and plays that were set in that year or roughly around that time. And then you can spend your time watching them. Um, you don't have to watch the whole thing if it's a film or a play and it's online. You can um, choose to just um, skim through if you're researching quickly. Um, and also then if you're um, able to access any theatres that are local to you or easy, easily accessible, um, you might find that there's a play on that isn't the same play that you're putting on but something similar or it might have a director that you really enjoy and um, pop along and see it if you can. There's always um, ways to get cheap tickets um, for students as well and um, you might gain some inspiration from seeing another live production. Um, conduct interviews. Uh, this is one that you might have tried already before but this doesn't mean um, going to speak to a professor on uh, the subject of your play. It might just mean you speak to someone who's done something similar before or you might speak to a friend who's been in a play who um, which the play was set in the same time or it was a similar story or a similar genre or you might speak to someone who is really experienced in immersive theatre because you want to uh, create a piece of immersive theatre. Um, so it, when we say interview we don't mean a, a sit down, um, very serious interview, it can be very casual, it could be a text, it could be an email. Um, when you're conducting interviews obviously always um, try and contact the person professionally if you can. Um, set it up so that you both feel comfortable about what, what you're going to talk about and ensure that you use the information they give you um, in a confidential manner or just make sure that they know that you, you're you using information for the reason you're using it. Um, okay, what to consider in your resource? There is no limit to what you can put in your resource. Um, we'll just talk about these quickly. So the visuals, this is the um, maison-scene, the first thing you see, the picture that you're trying to create. So this um, involves a lot of aspects of your, of your production that will go into your resource. So you, you think about um, how to research the set, the costume, the staging, and the lighting. Uh, context. 
When and where is a production set? You might be putting on a production of Hamlet, but you might be setting it um, in 1995 at a in a warehouse. So you need to find out what was happening at that time, what was the culture like at that time, how do people behave, how might that affect um, the behaviour of the um, the actors, how might that affect the meaning of the play. Um, so when and where is a production set? And context, um, you might think that only applies to productions that aren't set at the in the current time, but um, you always need to do your research no matter when and where the production set. So if you're setting something in the present day, you still need to confirm in your research resource exactly what is going on right now that might affect how your audience see your play. Style of the piece, naturalistic, minimalist, um, it could be abstract, Brechtian, the many different ways that you can style your piece um, need to be researched thoroughly um, in order for you to make sure you're telling the story that you want to. Um, you want to research the style of performance um, in relation to most likely the context and the style. So if you set the play in 1930, how the performers move might be very different if you set it in the 1800s. Their behaviours will change, um, how they, um, if there's any kind of dance scenes, they might dance differently, how they speak, how um, the different um, genders behave towards each other depending on the time you set it. There are many, many things that might affect the style of performance. And then lastly, the audience, their role and how they watch their production. And this, for me, um, really means, you know, where are they when the action's happening? Is it um, a promenade staging? Will they move? Is it traverse? Is it um, your classic kind of stage um, where they're just sat watching it for the whole production? Um, will it be immersive? Um, how will they watch it? Will they watch it on their phone? Will it be a piece of um, digital theatre? All these things are part of the bigger picture of your production and definitely something that you need to research. So the way that you can put together a research, uh, research resource are many ways and you can try all of these. However, I would limit, limit it to maybe two or three. Um, so we'll talk about the digital resources first. So Google Docs, um, you might be familiar with Google Docs already. It might be a way where you submit some work um, to school or how you put together research resources already. Um, Google Docs is brilliant because everyone can work on the document together. They can um, add, edit, you can make comments, you can see who last was on editing the resource. Uh, Pinterest is mainly a visual thing and a great um, resource for sharing lots of images, putting together a very clear image of what you want to achieve. You can put in images that link to other um, websites as well. Mind map, so a digital way of creating uh, mind maps and brainstorming. It's a fantastic resource, something I've only discovered recently and really, really enjoy it and I would definitely recommend you checking it out. And Flickr is um, a mainly a photo resource where you can store images, quite a lot of images as well, and it might be a way of um, uh, you storing images of how the production progresses as well, so like production photos for example. And then tangible resources, so something you might have in the rehearsal room is a mood board where you put all the sources of information, your images, your quotes, your piece of research, your text, your buzzwords, you will probably have a notebook yourself, um, but you might want to have a, no a notebook which is kind of central, like a shared file, where everyone adds in um, bits of information and then someone might take the notebook home for the weekend and add something to it. So you might take the notebook home each night separately and add something to it. So there's many, many ways of creating a tangible resource as well. I normally like to have one digital resor resource and one tangible resource. Um, to make sure that there's always a source of infor in information and inspiration for everyone involved in the production. So that is um, pretty much a very quick whistle stop tour through creating a research resource. Um, final thoughts um, to recap um, for yourselves is that your research can take or be in any shape or form. Um, so like I said, it could be digital or tangible. It could be... Um, a new online way of researching that you find yourself. Ask for help if you need it. If you're really stuck and find out information about a certain aspect of your production, ask for help. 
within your crew, within your cast, within uh, the bigger network that you have. Um, you can reach out to people online. Like I said, conduct interviews with anyone that you feel might help you. Ensure you make notes along the way. So as much as you've got a research resource, you might have another little notebook of notes about the research that will really help you tie it all together once you come to staging or creating your production. And lastly, enjoy the process. Researching is so exciting. Um, I always find myself getting very lost in it and then I don't really want to leave the research stage of um, things because that means then you're deep into the creation of things and that's the scary bit. So really enjoy your research, take your time um, and I hope you find this helpful uh, lesson. Thank you.